It seems like not that long ago, we were sharing our Airbnb renovation journey, but it's already been a year and a half. I think Andy and I both were just kind of like, oh my gosh, what did we get into? Oh, you have a headlamp. Because <laughs> there's no light. We found termites. The first year was definitely a learning experience and this current year has been really smooth sailing. So I thought it would be the perfect time to share how much we made on our Airbnb in the first full year, along with some of the road bumps we hit along the way. I have a previous video that goes through how much we spent on the condo, renovating and decorating that I'll link below. But to recap, we initially put around $68,000 into the place and that factors in everything I just mentioned, including the down payment. We, I think, closed on the place at the end of September, which was the perfect time because winter in Florida is definitely the high seasons. Florida is a very high and low season and we're right by the beach. So winter time is huge, especially for snowbirds. Places book up for a year in advance and go for a premium because there's so little available. That being said, we finished our renovation at the end of November. So it was wide open for anybody to book, which wasn't the case for a lot of other condos by the beach. So that being said, our best month was February. So we grossed a little over $7,000 and the other winter months we grossed close to $5,000. Now on the other hand, our slowest month was September because right after kids go back to school, it really drops off until the holidays and we grossed just under 2,000 for the whole month. And again, those were numbers that we grossed, not taking into account all of our expenses. Let's just dive straight into the numbers, the whole point of this video. So we grossed $41,779 for the entire year. Our mortgage is $810 and HOA fees are 327. Those just went up this year, but that's for next year's video. Then we have utilities. I'm gonna wrap together electric, water, and internet because cable is included with our HOA. That averages about 216 a month. And in this category is where we had our first hurdle. So something happened with our toilet that caused the water just to keep running. So our water bill went from like $40 a month to about 150 a month, which of course we didn't notice until we got the bill. So we fixed it, it lowered the bill, but then it happened again. And this went on for about three months of extra high water bills. But luckily when we were able to go to the condo and enjoy it ourselves, uh, we were able to fix it for good. And then cleaning costs for the year were $5,305 because we aren't able to clean it ourselves. Obviously we live far away. Um, and we spent also about $700 on supplies. So paper goods, consumables, snacks that we give our guests, all little things like that. So let's talk about a few of the major issues we ran into our first year. Starting with the worst, our AC went out in the middle of summer. This was our first summer uh, since owning the condo and in the Florida heat, we realized it just wasn't working great. It was taking a long time to cool. Why the inspector didn't put that on our inspection when we bought the place, I'm not sure, but we had to buy a new unit for $4,000. Um, I guess units can go up to like 10 or $15,000, but again, we have a condo, it's a two bed, two bath. So not a huge unit, but that ate a huge chunk of our profits. And then another issue that I noticed when we were down there ourselves is that I like really, really hot showers. And I noticed our water was hot, warm-ish, but not super hot. And so we looked at our tankless hot water heater, which again, the inspector didn't notice and it was corroded. Luckily, that was something we were able to replace ourselves. So it only cost $250 for the actual unit and we were just able to replace it. So those were really only the two things that we had to really replace besides like broken things here and there. Um, the AC was a lot, but one guest sent us this video. And I about had a heart attack. We are on the top floor. So I, we, I just didn't know why the water was like pouring through the roof. This is where our indoor AC handler is. So it turns out that again, the previous owners just didn't really take care of this unit at all. 
and they never serviced it. And in Florida, with the humidity, things grow in the condensate line. Essentially, you're supposed to flush it with like vinegar, keep the line clear, and it had just clogged up. This wasn't something we knew we even needed to maintenance. So again, we were gone. We had to pay for a plumber to come fix it. Luckily, it was an easy fix. It was just unclogging the pipe, and now we maintain it, and it's good to go. So of course, we refunded the guest a little bit. So all this just rolls into a little bit of the profits. And also our few months of hosting, we had an elderly downstairs neighbor who A, just did not understand Airbnbs and B, just completely hates them. And they're completely allowed in our condo complex. Um, probably about half of the units are Airbnbs or just some kind of rentals. And she just wanted to complain and just try to get us to waste so much money that it wouldn't be profitable for us to keep continuing to Airbnb. And so the first couple months were honestly a nightmare because of her. She made up a lot of lies when we weren't there. She had stormed in on our guest a couple times while they were in the condo. Um, so we had to refund a few guests for her craziness. But the worst story we have and the most costly one is she calls us like screaming that her bathroom is like getting poured in water from ours, which is above her bathroom. Lo and behold, she actually never sent us any proof, any videos, which we really shut her down after that because it, long story short, she completely made up the whole thing. A plumber came out three times that we had to pay for to go out there and saw no water, no moisture, and no evidence of moisture damage in her bathroom. They even brought out infrared cameras that can detect moisture, and our plumber explained that if there was any moisture in the past 24, 48 hours, it would definitely be on there, and there was zero. And he also told us that she just complained about Airbnbs to him the whole time he was looking at her bathroom, and he essentially said, I think she's just trying to get you to spend money. So we contacted the guy who like manages our HOA. He knows that she's been a problem for the years that she's lived there to him himself. So he was like, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll pay the next time a plumber has to go out. And she never provided any proof and never heard anything about anything leaking ever again. Craziness. I still don't understand how you could just make that up. Let's just move along. I get so much anxiety still thinking of that. But with all of that said, let's talk about the final numbers. The final numbers that we grossed were $41,779. And we had $26,910 in expenses bringing our profit of the year to $14,923 or about $1,200 a month in profit. Plus, let's not forget, we did add in about $6,000 in equity that we're paying towards our mortgage that is kind of wrapped up in expenses. So that's a little bonus. The $4,000 AC unit really did give us a big hit, but at this point, almost everything in our condo is brand new. It's also appreciated about $100,000, which is amazing, but we don't plan to sell anytime soon, but they are going for way more than we bought for in our complex right now. In the first year, we also spent money like here and there when guests would recommend things or we wanted to add things like more drawers in the closet, more coffee mugs, random things like that. We kept adding things as we went a little bit at a time. And I feel like now a year and a half into it, we pretty much have everything that the majority of guests would need and have almost thought of everything, but we still get some surprises every now and then of people who want extra things. So this year has already been a lot smoother than our first year. We've worked out a lot of the kinks. We fingers crossed, haven't heard from our neighbor. And we've actually already profited more in the first half of this year than we did in the whole last year. So I'm very happy about that. We were able to get um, two back-to-back long-term rentals for like two months at a time during the winter months. So it was great, very hands-off. We really liked doing that. And not only that, but on top of our profit, we actually used the condo ourselves and or with family or went down with family for one month out of the entire year. So I think that's great. It's really the best of both worlds and we're able to use it, let our friends and family use it. It's a great escape from North Carolina and we love going to Florida, especially in the winter months. Um, so we also get to use it ourselves and make a profit as well.
It's definitely a lot harder managing it remotely. And yes, we could go with a management company, but that cuts into a lot of the profits. So it's a little stressful doing it ourselves. It would be easier if it was closer and easier for us to get to when things did go wrong. But so far it's been great. We're happy to have it. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I'll make a Q&A video or something like that. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.